Years of crying and begging God or the universe to take the desire away from me to want a relationship because it was driving me insane. I was obsessed with wanting a relationship and wanting to be married. I was, it, it consumed me and I couldn't take it anymore. And now here I am at 40 years old and I catch myself randomly smiling throughout the day because I love my life so much. And people will often comment and it pisses me off, but they'll say, all the horrible guys you dated, it's no wonder why you want to be by yourself. No, it's not really that. Because I took a moment and I focused on the other parts of my life and getting love from other places. Focus on the love from your family and the love from your friends. And that, I don't know, that just changed my perspective on everything. And I began to look at my friends and how they love and support me and how I can go to them and they've been with me through everything. Guys always say, what do you bring to the table? No. What do you bring to the table? because there's no more subtracting from my life. I need people adding happiness, adding money, adding peace, adding joy, adding laughter. If a man was coming my life, I want more of what I have now, not less. And maybe that's not possible for me. I really don't, I honestly don't see myself with anybody. I don't think that I'm the marrying or relationship type. I don't think I'm that woman. But the great news is, whether or not I am, I like it here. So it really doesn't matter. Her opinion is not an anomaly. A lot of black women feel that way. I wanna address a word that is often used to women like me and in many ways content creators who make the type of content that I make, which is chameleon. Men, they don't like you on the internet and they don't like what you have to say in your message they'll call you a chameleon women will call you a pick me and the interesting thing is that oftentimes if you're making uh, sort of accountability content as a female content creator in most cases is because you likely or at least to some degree have the outcomes in your own life right which is which allows you to be able to make the content Who, who's giving that message oftentimes it's someone who is struggling in the very area that they're telling you you're wrong about you know whereas i have a lot of married people who've been married 15 20 30 years who will comment in my comment the, in the comment sections on my videos and say you're right naka you're absolutely right <laughs> i want to go back to to competition and one of the things uh, a viewer actually pointed this out and I appreciate it when I, on my video that's called When Black Women Play the Game and Lose, I talk about competition amongst women. And so one of the things that I say in that video, I talked about women competing in that video, but I didn't talk about why women compete. You sort of, the, the sort of biology of it, the uh, science of it, you know, mating and that when women compete, it is about oftentimes survival is that the woman who say is the most feminine has the best chance of securing a protector, a provider, a problem solver, um, and so forth. She, if we're looking at it from a survival standpoint, she is most likely to survive um, and to some degree, perhaps, assuming she has a good man, thrive. And I want us to look at, kind of go back to the competition here. And, you know, there's something that's happening where people are being accused of being a chameleon, but I think there's a lack of understanding in terms of what a chameleon actually looks like. In my opinion, a chameleon does not have the life outcomes. Uh, a chameleon would be somebody who would have the opposite life outcomes. Someone who would make videos 
about a thing, but not be able to in, her, in his or her own life, Derek Jackson, <laughs> Danae Jackson, right? Not in his or her own, his or her own life, not produce the fruit of whatever they're talking about. And I want to use an example, sort of a metaphor of like, say, I don't know why this came to mind, but I know it was a thing some years ago, and maybe it still is for black women to wear Malaysian hair, you know, hair from other other women of other cultures and other parts of the world. But let's just go with Malaysian hair. And say a black woman goes on Amazon, orders this Malaysian hair, wears it out to a party. Then, and, and say she gets a lot of compliments and people are like, oh my gosh, you look, your hair is so amazing. It's so original. It's, you know, it, and then a woman walks into the party who is actually Malaysian, of the Malaysian culture with the authentic Malaysian hair growing out of her head this black woman who ordered hers off of Amazon is now the replica. She is the carbon copy. She is the fraud, right? The, the, the woman from Malaysia in this case is the original. And I want us to take that example and sort of expand it to the topic of femininity and feminine competition. Who, I, I'm curious about, who, who are who are the replicas? Who are the carbon copies? Who are the frauds? <laughs> and 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 who is authentic? And, and in my opinion, one of the best ways to measure this would be to look at the fruit of someone's own life. Not that anybody's life is perfect, not that anyone's relationship is perfect. No, it's not what I'm talking about. But if you're on the internet and you're making videos to, to sort of sway women in a way to believe that, you know, men ha have no good intentions. You know, men are just going to use and abuse them emotionally, financially, leave them with poor mental health. And then you, in the same breath, turn around and say, well, if I ever get in a relationship <laughs> or, 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 or you, you talk about like, you know, I don't need a man because I have friends and I have you know, family members, and they are my support system. Well, keep in mind that a lot of these friends and family members have families of their own, have men, you know, have husbands and kids. So, you know, you have to be mindful of that too. You don't want to leech off of anybody because you, in this case, this woman um, on the video, but in many ways, what she just said echoes what I often hear in the comment section on my videos have been hurt, have your own trauma and, and pain that, that actually shows pretty visibly in your videos. There's this thing going on with modern women where they are graduating from their marriages, but then failing at dating. Tiamari. <laughs> if we go back to the passport conversation, you know, um, my passport video that I enlisted um, and look at why are men getting their passports? Why are men, you know, leaving the United States or, or even have, desiring to leave the States? Before you get your passport to, to permanently leave the States, how are you vetting women to make sure that they are not fake feminine? How are you exposing the replicas? Are you exposing the replicas? Um, and, and I would be curious, you know, comment below to know more about that process for you. And so about a week and a half ago, I uh, put a question in the community tab right here on YouTube and the community showed up and showed out. So thanks to everyone who responded to my question. And my question was, what can we do as black men and black women to improve our romantic relationships with each other? What can we do to uh, restore, essentially, our uh, relationships with each other in the Black community? This post has now received over 200 comments. 
And I just wanna shout out everyone who responded. Um, I am in the process of going through the comments, reading them. Um, it will take a while, but uh, I just wanna thank you because not only are your responses uh, critical, but also insightful. And bringing it back to the woman who went on Amazon, who got the, the, the fake hair that she looked really original wearing until the actual original walked through the door and exposed her. And now she's looking kind of stupid and crazy because prior to the Malaysian woman coming in, she was looking like the original. And I think that, you know, again, this is a metaphor to talk about femininity, who's really feminine and who's not, you know, and if we're talking about survival, a lot of times, you know, again, women will do whatever it takes to pretend to be something for their own survival. You know, if it means that they can have a provider or at least a, the, uh, the hologram or the appearance of a, of a provider, they'll, they'll do it. How uh, sustainable is it? If you're, if you're fake feminine and you have a man, is that gonna hold up? How long can that hold up? And you know, at what point will you will your femininity or your lack thereof of femininity be exposed? And so I think as we talk about passports and who has one and who's gonna get one and when you're gonna leave and go and date elsewhere, and this is regardless of whether you're dating black women in other parts of the world, this is looking at really no matter wherever you go, what is your vetting process? to make sure that whoever you choose is actually who she says she is or who you, you, you believe her to be, at least who you thought she was when you, when you met her. So shout out again to everyone um, who came through um, and made a comment in my community. And I'm gonna be still going through and reading your, your comments. I appreciate you. So getting ready to actually go to my business program shortly. So hopefully I'll be back to you with what I learned and more about my growing YouTube business and more about my um, growing business curated legacy LLC. So stay tuned. Hey, you all getting ready to go very soon into my business program and I'll update you as soon as I can. But I just want to say that you know, there's a lot of secrecy around business, a lot of secrecy. Um, when my mom and I wrote our first book, it was a lot that we later learned that we should have done, could have done. <laughs> Just like I make things visible for the modern black woman, I also want to make things visible for the modern business person. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, yeah, I, I have, you know, I always say I have two books on Amazon. I have a YouTube channel, obviously, that you're watching right now. These are micro businesses. These are what I like to call micro businesses. And again, there's so much secrecy around uh, not only how to create <clears throat> the business, how to maintain, sustain the business, but also, you know, how much money does one make on YouTube? You know, how do you even get started? How much money do you make? Um, how much money do you make if you have books on Amazon? You know, and so again, my hope is to reveal some of these things. And for some of this, you do need to get on my email list, to be honest with you. <laughs> One of the first offerings that I'm thinking about having is how to get started on YouTube and, um, you know, also about YouTube monetization, but also how to create a micro business, like being an author and having a book on Amazon. You know, people talk about passive income. Well, I have passive income when you guys buy my books, thank you. <laughs> That's passive income. When you guys uh, watch my videos, that is passive income. But there's a lot that we don't talk about um, that this is, it's, it's passive to a degree, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. And I don't think there's enough transparency around this topic. So um, my hope is that you will tune in for this portion of my life and uh, stay tuned for more.
you tuned in last week, I am taking a, um, I'm part of a business program and there are a hundred, a hundred businesses in this program. Um, we were split up, um, my group, there are 40 businesses in my group. And then I'm in a smaller group where it's like maybe four of us. And so, um, I have, I'm going to have weekly homework, you know, week, weekly assignments, weekly uh, coaching and mentoring and weekly connections with my group, lots of networking, all the good things. But I think the big takeaway today has to do with the fact that uh, the business plan that you always hear about has become obsolete to a degree. The new thing is um, interviewing. So instead of creating a business plan, that may or may not work, you actually, uh, it's better to interview your uh, prospective clients and those who you want to help, uh, interview them about their problems, how you can solve their problems, and then refine your services as you go along. One of the transitions I'm probably gonna be making is moving from working. Um, I, I do work with individuals and I still will work with individuals. I'm going to be doing more group um, coaching and consulting as I've been trying to collect emails, get on my email list. But also in terms of what I really want to do is work with companies. And so my coaching and, con and consulting services, again, I help those self-published books, those who are aspiring authors. I also um, help those who want to get started on YouTube. There are a lot of companies and a lot of businesses who could be leveraging their services by simply having a YouTube channel. They could have a lot more exposure simply by just having a, a page um, or a channel on YouTube. And so I think my new client is going to be, um, my, my target client is going to be, again, organizations and companies corporations to some extent, and not only individual people or individual groups, if that makes sense. So stay tuned as next week I'll be sharing more. Again, this program, it actually is only an eight week program, but it ends in December. So I think we have some weeks off, but uh, I am gonna be coming back to you with more updates. If you guys have questions, leave your questions. Um, let me do my, my spiel here, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Click the links in the description box. Get to know what I do with my, my coaching and consulting business, Curated Legacy LLC. Um, my personal brand is that I make things visible for black women. That is my personal brand. So really quickly, the reason why my channel is not called Curated Legacy, my channel is called Naka Onilafor is because that is my personal brand. But underneath or, or you know, the personal brand is the umbrella. Underneath that is Curated Legacy. And again, that's my coaching and consulting services. Also underneath the umbrella of my personal brand is my books on Amazon, one about being an invisible black woman and my YouTube channel. So if you wanna do what I'm doing, if you wanna do something similar to what I'm doing, if you just wanna know how I'm doing it all, I don't even know how I'm doing it all, but if you wanna know how I'm trying and attempting to do it all, <laughs> leave your comment and hit me up on my website. And also I will be featured on Dr. Thunder's YouTube channel. So I will link his channel in the description box here. I'll be, I will be featured on his channel next week, Friday, um, which I believe is October 6th in the morning live from 8.30 a.m. until almost 10 a.m. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to catch the replay. I'll be sure to share the replay with my community. And all, as always, <laughs> It's a mouthful as always. Stay tuned for more videos. Bye.